lot of fingers crossed right now in Florida. You're looking at live pictures right here of Atlantis on the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. The crew is aboard, and according to the plan, the hatch has just been closed for liftoff. It's scheduled for 1126 Eastern Time. But some storms are also threatening to scrub this historic glass launch. We're watching the weather as well. Seeing as Brooke Baldwin and Carol Costello are both there. So, Brooke, still all systems go? So far, Kira Phillips, all systems are go. Let me peek up and see. I do see some blue skies sort of uh, through the clouds here. Uh, that is a good sign. If the hatch is closing so far, 1126 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, that is when we should see this 135th and final launch of a space shuttle. Uh, quickly, the last major hurdle that was crossed was right around 1.30 this morning when the weather tanking meeting happened. So we now know that the fuel tank is full. We also have seen the pictures of the, the crew of four of the Atlantis sitting nose up. So that's also a good sign. Uh, and finally, the last time I'm told we really need to watch is the nine minute mark on that countdown clock. That's the final hold. It lasts for about half an hour and that's when the crews get in there and ultimately decide the go no go decision. So that's the latest in terms of the launch. We're all still waiting for it real quickly. I just want to tell you here. I'm at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. You see this mock up of the shuttle behind me. We're, we're hoping to see the, the space shuttle Atlantis go up this morning. It will return right here to Kennedy Space Center. So any visitor from around the world in 2013 can come take a look at the real deal right here. Two years. Kind of exciting. Hoping tourists continue to come down to Cape Canaveral. Kira. That perfect segue because our Carol Costello is right there in the middle of all the action where a lot of people have come out to say so long to the shuttle. Right, Carol? Oh, people told me last night that there would be a million people today. And from what it looked like yesterday, because it was raining all day, I said, oh, come on. But take a look. This is Port Canaveral. This is just a little piece of land right off of the highway. Look at all of these people waiting for the shuttle to launch. And they're from every part of the country, Missouri and Tennessee and Kentucky and the great state of Michigan. Um, let me introduce you to my new friends, Kira. This is Dick. Dick, welcome. I should welcome you. <laughs> How long have you been here? I've been here since yesterday flew in from Detroit and uh, got here yesterday afternoon staying in a motel in Orlando so you actually planned for this you got the hotel a month in advance so your grandson Jacob could see this I've always said I wanted to see a launch and they kept putting it off putting it off putting it off and being that this is the last one I said I've got to do it so I invited my grandson come with me. That's awesome. So how long have you been sitting on this beach waiting? Since 4.30 this morning. <laughs> oh, are you a little tired? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> but he won't let me sleep. <laughs> I bet you won't. That's good for you, Jacob. So, Jacob, um, how do you feel about the shuttle about to be launched? I think about it, it will be really exciting and it will look uh, really good. Um, do you think it'll be a big boom? I mean, what do you think it's going to look like? I think there will be smoke coming out of it and uh, some, uh, when it goes up into the clouds, I think uh, you'll get to see some parts fall down and stuff. <laughs> it will be exciting. There probably will be smoke coming out of it. Why is this an important moment for you? Well, because I've always been interested in the space program. And like I said, being it's the last phase of this particular program, I, I wanted to be part of it. So here I am. It's worth being here since 4.30 this morning. Thank you, Dick and Jacob. We appreciate it. So, Kira, everybody here keeping their fingers crossed that the launch will go off at 11.26 Eastern Time. Um, it'll be right over there. So keep your fingers and your toes crossed for us, Kira. We all are. Believe me, we want to see it happen, too. Carol, thanks so much. And as Carol pointed out, just under two hours till liftoff, hopefully. Our crews at Kennedy Space Center will keep monitoring the launch preps, the weather. So stick with us for our special coverage of NASA's very last shuttle mission. All right, coming up, the crews aboard Atlantis, anxious to get going, but the last shuttle launch ever, still not a sure thing. Our special coverage with Anderson Cooper starts in just a few minutes. CNN's special coverage of the shuttle Atlantis launch starts right now. Thanks very much. Good morning, everyone. Hello from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I'm Anderson Cooper behind me on launch pad 39A. About three miles away, the space shuttle Atlantis and its crew of four are prepared for liftoff just a little less than one hour from now. STS-135 will be the last mission for NASA's shuttle program, the 135th mission. But as we celebrate this historic launch, let's look at how we got here.
Atlantis and its crew of four are ready to make history minutes from now with the last liftoff of a U.S. space shuttle. Uh, it'll be at that moment when it's finally over that you'll be able to exhale, take a breath, understand the significance of, of the moment. But Americans have been fascinated with space exploration for decades. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon. The first generation of astronauts became our national heroes. The missions that followed broke down barriers on Earth and beyond. NASA made the unimaginable happen before our very eyes. Four high return temps. I was not reporting any RAF at this time. Battles with red tape and unspeakable tragedy may have marked this program, but Americans still feel pride and patriotism when we hear the countdown. Zero and liftoff. And hope. I hope to become an astronaut. Hope for the future of a program that will not end after this, the final launch. We'll talk about what uh, the future holds for the U.S. space program in our program uh, this morning. But in the next hour, the excitement is building toward liftoff. And I got to tell you, it is very exciting here. As many as a million people are believed to have gathered to watch this liftoff in person, they want to see history happening. They want to see the last uh, space shuttle launching off. We've also learned that President Obama will be making a statement. Uh, at some point uh, within this next hour, we, of course, uh, will bring that to you uh, live. That'll be from the Rose Garden uh, on this morning's jobs report. We'll carry that live when it happens. I want to bring off, the, bring uh, in my colleague, John Zarella, uh, who has covered a lot. How, yeah. what, this is your what yeah, launch? between 75 and 80 launches. 75, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But this one, I mean, this is, uh, oh, historic yeah. is probably going to be the most overused word today, so we'll try to avoid using it. But, uh, I mean, this is it. This is the final launch, and these, this crew, the final four. Yeah, 30 years they've been flying shuttles, uh, you know. My, my boys have never known anything else but space shuttles, yeah. as, as many people have out here. What's uh, going on right now? Because we, we see right. the countdown clock behind us. Uh, and there's going to be a hold coming up right. in there, so that's not the real time. Right. You shouldn't think, you see 28 uh, minutes on right. that, but don't, don't think that that means it's happening in 28 minutes. They'll take it down to 20, and right. they'll stop, and then they'll take it down to 9 again and stop. So they're built in holds, so they can go over things, make sure things are going, going okay. Right now, Rick Sturkow, we heard the flying overhead in the uh, shuttle training aircraft, checking the weather, which is the big issue right now is is this cloud cover we see but you know in 1988 the first flight after the challenger accident the weather was just like this mm -hmm. the sky opened up mm -hmm. and they got well, discovery off the ground last night when i went to bed around yeah. 2 a.m they were saying 70 percent chance of this being canceled it looks like the the sky has cleared certainly it's not raining right now they they have a shot and that's why they're going through with this count the astronauts are on board the four the four member crew they're they, they fueled up starting around 2 a.m last 2 night. 2 a.m takes about four hours to get the half a million gallons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen into the main tank here uh and so they're all ready to go they did have to change out a liquid oxygen pump not a big deal that's done uh and uh, the vehicle's in perfect shape it, it's just the weather right now anderson well, let's check in we're going to check the weather in a moment but first let's go to ed lavendera he is in mission control uh in houston ed at this point it's a go it sounds like it. We've heard throughout the morning here since we've been here of uh, the officials here hey, and the NASA officials can you hear me? that are in charge of. Yep, I can hear you, Anderson. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I got you. Sorry, Ed. Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no worries. All right. So this is Mission Control, and uh, we'll take you, take you down here in that middle bank that you can see there. The, the gentleman with the, with the dark hair there with his back to us, that is Richard Jones. He is the, the flight director. He is the man that will be making the call on whether or not Atlantis lifts off. And it's been a very calm morning here. We've seen a lot of these, these folks uh, monitoring the satellite images that they're getting of the weather in the area. They've been a uh, lot of smiles in, in, in this room, very laid back, and they've been here for, for many hours uh, monitoring all the data that's coming in making sure everything is what needs to it needs to be in place to, to make all of this happen so this is mission control once the uh, Atlantis is up in space they'll be manned 24 7 and this is an emotional moment for the folks here uh, in the Houston area that have been part of this space shuttle program for all three decades so many of the people some of the people in this room will be losing jobs after the space shuttle program ends there are a lot of people watching this this closely uh, an emotional moment but uh, their number one goal right here today is making sure that Atlantis gets up safely and that this crew gets up safely and returns back to Earth safely. So it's really not a, a moment to kind of focus on for them on what has been going on with the space shuttle program and just how emotional this moment will be. 
But you can imagine when Atlantis returns safely back to Earth uh, that it will be a very emotional moment for all of the people in this room who are, who are working to get Atlantis off the ground. Anderson? Yeah, even though there, there's only four people on board uh, the Atlantis this morning, and that's a very small crew. Normally there's more than that. Uh, there's not going to be any spacewalks on this one because uh, there are just four people. Uh, but, but remember, there are thousands of people standing behind those four astronauts, thousands of people who have been working for years uh, to make this a reality, and many of them will be losing their jobs, and also this obviously affecting the surrounding areas around the, here in uh, Florida, around the Kennedy uh, Space Center. Uh, let's ch check over to uh, Chad Myers, who's at the Kennedy uh, Space Center. He's at the visitor complex. Chad, uh, the weather seems to be, seems to be holding at this point. Okay, we're obviously having uh, audio problems with that. Let's go to Carol Costello. She is at Port Canaveral, where a lot of people have, have gathered uh, to, uh, to watch this viewing. Carol, there are some reports as many as a million people may have gathered. Uh, what's the mood like there? It is joyous, Anderson. I know it's an emotional day for NASA, but people could not be happier here. I'm right off of 528 on a little patch of land in a Port Canaveral, but what a view. Take a look. Over my shoulder, you can actually see, at least I can with my naked eye, the space shuttle itself. It's a little tiny thing in the distance, but when it takes off, you will see the bright lights of the smoke in the sky, probably the rumbling on the ground. What makes this site so attractive is take a look over here at this big vehicle. Inside, amateur radio guys they have a line hooked into nasa controls so the people out here can actually hear the countdown from nasa they're going to pipe it out to the crowd and the crowd just loves it <laughs> I'm telling you, Anderson, people from all over the country are here. I've talked to people from Missouri, from Tennessee, um, Kentucky, some people over there from Canada. We're going to talk to them a little later. They've been camped out on this beach for a couple days now. They actually arrived three days ago, kind of scoped out the area and centered on this spot. They've been sitting in beach chairs along the water line there, oh, for about 48 hours now. So they're ready for that launch to go on. I was so excited to hear from Chad Myers so I, so I could share with the crowd with some positive possible good news because believe me Anderson they want that thing to take off this afternoon uh, yeah I can tell you everybody here certainly wants to see that and people around the world want to see that uh, Carol appreciate it, and we will check in with Chad as soon as we get his audio fixed right now the, Na the, uh, the uh, NASA test director is doing final briefings with the launch team they enter a 10 minute hold at T minus 20 minutes as, as John Zarella mentioned a few moments ago while those checks happen now the countdown resumes at 21 past the hour and the computers on board Atlanta switch to launch mode. Now, when we get to 32 past the hour, you'll see the countdown clock stop again at T-minus nine minutes. That'll last for well over half an hour while management teams make their final go, no-go decision on the launch, assuming everything is a go, and right now it seems to be. Then at 11.17 Eastern time, the countdown resumes at T-minus nine minutes to launch. Keep in mind, the crew has been on board Atlantis for a few hours at this point. At 11.19, the access arm will retract 1121 more systems start up including auxiliary power units so that that's the checklist ahead of the launch which is scheduled still for 1126 a.m. this morning we have much more ahead in the next two hours of our live coverage on the past and the future of NASA space program we're live here from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida we'll be right back in a moment October 4th 1957 the Soviet Union launches the first artificial satellite into orbit Sputnik Russia's new technology is seen as a threat to America, and the U.S. forms its own space program. A year later, NASA is born. And that's another CNN top moment in space.